Robberies nowadays don't only involve pointing a gun at someone and asking them for their money, violently. It's effective, yes, but there are other ways. Though, if you're a smart robber and want a large payoff, quite a bit of thinking and meticulous planning will be needed. And it's these planned heists that we're going to be talking about today. From someone who stole a billion dollars using a simple note to the largest digital robbery to date, here are the 10 most genius robberies in history. Number 10. Saddam Hussein's Billion Dollar Heist the current generation probably doesn't understand the control that deposed dictator Saddam Hussein had on his country of Iraq. Heck, some of you probably don't even know the guy outside of memes. But for the entirety of the 90s, he had such an iron grip on his power that no one was able to depose him for over a decade. That is until the US stepped in and invaded Iraq. And this actually is when our story starts. When Saddam Hussein found out that US cruise missiles would be knocking on his doors the following day, he decided that he would enact the biggest bank heist in history by walking away with a billion US dollars taken from the Central Bank of Iraq. And he did it by using a handwritten note. Okay, if you want to get technical, he didn't just use the note. He basically had his son and head of Iraqi security forces, Kwase, deliver the note to the bank's governor. And he was backed out by a ton of Iraqi soldiers. The money was then loaded on the trucks and would have disappeared from the face of the earth if the deposed Iraqi leader was just good at hiding. Of course, Saddam was found hiding in a hole, and the money was soon found. And nowadays, he lives on in memes. Number 9. The Walk-In Heist On the young night of Saturday, August 27th, precisely at 11.50 p.m., 12 men entered one of Sao Paulo's most highly secured buildings, the Banco Itals Bank Branch located on Palista Avenue, the very financial and business heart of Brazil's biggest metropolis. Without firing a single shot, they spent the following 10 hours breaking into some 170 private strongboxes belonging to at least 120 of the bank's wealthiest clients. The following morning, the thieves left with cash, luxury watches, gold bars, sapphires, emeralds, rubies, and diamonds that had the combined worth of 58.5 million. I know what you're thinking right now. How could a group of men just walk away after robbing a bank of such prestige? Well, the answer is perfect planning. The thieves themselves passed through the security check at the bank's underground parkade by identifying themselves as furnishing workers. A perfect disguise since the branch was under renovations and the guards of the building had been previously warned about people coming in that night. No one was hurt during the robbery and only two security guards were disarmed. One during the night of the robbery and the other when he came in for his shift the following morning. Number 8. Unwilling Accomplice the most ingenious of bank heists involves someone from the inside working on the robber's behalf. It's called an inside job and many robberies have worked just by using this time-tested method. What if you can't get an inside man to work for you? Simple. You force one. I mean, if you're gonna try and pull out the biggest bank heist in British history, you wouldn't shy away from doing a bit of kidnapping and grave threats, now would you? Can't get your hands dirty if you don't work. And mind you, that's exactly what a gang did when on February 21st, 2006, they abducted Securitas Cash Depot manager Colin Dixon while disguised as police officers. Not only that, other members of the gang also abducted Dixon's wife and child, and also posed as security officers. With Dixon in tow and a couple of insurance policies, the heavily armed men walked into the bank and walked out with $35 million. I'm not exactly sure what happened to Dixon and his family, but I do know that the money was never found. Number 7. The Great Jewel Heist To this day, the Great Diamond Heist is considered to be the largest gem heist in the British history. The robbery happened on August 2009, when two men disguised as customers took home $65 million worth of gems and jewels from the Graf Diamond Store in London. They used handguns to threaten the store staff, making it easier for them to get away with the loot. The entire heist only lasted around 25 minutes, which was enough time apparently. Also, even though CCTV cameras were everywhere in the store, the robbers didn't even bother concealing their faces. It was later found out that the robbers spent over four hours with professional makeup artists who used wigs, toners, and latex prosthetics to disguise themselves. Honestly, it couldn't make this thing up. Upon exiting the store, the robbers fired shots into the air to create panic and confusion before hopping onto their waiting BMW for their epic, as well as extremely stylish, escape. The heist was well planned and executed, with one glaring exception. Somehow, possibly in the excitement of things, the robbers left a cell phone behind, which was used by authorities to later track them down. Number 6. The Drag Heist Another jewelry heist, but this time in Paris, France. Harry Woodson is a well-known jewelry designer for the stars, and we all know what that means. The store is loaded with priceless jewelry, quite a tempting target for daring robbers. 
And of course, it indeed became a target when in 2008, a group of armed robbers stormed in and made away with 102 million worth in jewelry. The MO was pretty similar to that of the guys in the previous entry, but they clearly didn't spend too much time in the makeup chair. They instead wore women's clothing wigs and heels. They casually walked into the store, pulled out a hand grenade, and in less than 20 minutes, they made their escape. The culprit's movements were calculated and precise. It was as if they mapped out the store and gathered a lot of information prior to the robbery. In fact, they even knew the first names of the store staff. As of writing, eight men have already been convicted of this daring heist. Most of the loot, however, still has not been found. Number five, the Great Train Robbery. All right, so this might be a bit old school for you and might remind you of Red Dead Redemption, but that doesn't mean that this robbery wasn't just sheer genius. The Great Train Robbery was the robbery of $2.6 million from a Royal Mail train heading from Glasgow to London on the West Coast Main Line in the early hours of the 8th of August, 1963, at Bridgego Railway Bridge, Leadburn, near Mentmore in Buckinghamshire, England. That was a mouthful and a half, I am not gonna lie. The heist was planned months in advance, perpetrated by no less than 18 people, one of which remains unidentified to this day. Their main problem was how to stop the speeding train, and they did it in such a simple way that it was genius. They tampered with the track signal lights, which simply involved covering the green light and attaching a battery to the red light, so the train would stop. When they achieved that, it was a pretty simple process afterwards. While most of the culprits were caught afterwards, it did give rise to the legends of Ronnie Biggs, who, after escaping prison, stayed on the lam for 36 years before turning himself over to authorities in 2001. Number 4. The Cops Are The Robbers Okay, yeah, to be fair, the thieves in this story were only just dressed as cops. They weren't real cops, but their disguises were so to the point that they convinced two security guards to let them into the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in the wee hours of the morning. The robbers entered the museum at around 1.24 a.m., under the pretense that they were responding to a reported disturbance. Since it was St. Patty's Day, the two guards on duty thought that some drunk revelers somehow managed to climb over the museum fence. Once inside, the robbers were able to handcuff both guards and wrap duct tape around their heads and eyes. Once the guards were fully restrained, they pretty much had run of the place. All in all, the thieves got away with 13 works of art valued at around $500 million. Among them were a few pieces made by Rembrandt, including The Storm on the Sea of Galilee and A Lady and the Gentleman in Black. None of these priceless works of art have ever been recovered and no arrests have been made as well. Number 3. A Robbery with Political Implications Here's another robbery where the thieves ingeniously use abduction and grave threats to make sure that everything goes well for them. But in this case, there was some more serious political implications aside from having a large amount of money stolen. However, we're gonna get to that a little bit later. On the night of December 19, 2004, groups of armed men arrived at the homes of two employees of Northern Bank, Chris Ward and Kevin McMullen. The armed men were disguised as police officers. However, unlike our previous entry, the armed men didn't care about real disguises. They told the two bank employees to help them pull off the heist, and to make sure that they would fully cooperate, some of the gunmen stayed in their homes, threatening to gun down their families if they didn't do exactly what they told them to do. All in all, $26.5 million were stolen. To this day, no arrests have been made. Though you gotta remember that there actually was some political implications that I was talking about earlier. Well, the robbery actually had a negative effect on the Northern Ireland peace process, with authorities claiming that the IRA was behind the heist, which the IRA vehemently denied. Now it's time for today's best pick. Today's pick is a robbery so complicated, so technical, you'd think that something like this would only happen in movies. And yet, it did happen in real life, and the details are absolutely astonishing. Learn more about it next with number two. The Heist of the Century What was later to be called the Heist of the Century happened during the weekend of February 15th and 16th, 2003, where thieves stole loose diamonds, gold, silver, and other types of jewelry worth more than $100 million. This was all from the Antwerp World Diamond Center located in Belgium. Mind you, this was no walk-in, wave a gun in the air, walk-out kind of robbery, though. This was a well-planned-out robbery, probably months beforehand. And the robbers absolutely had to do some meticulous planning. The vault that housed the loot was protected by multiple security mechanisms, including a lock with 100 million possible combinations, infrared heat detectors, a seismic sensor, Doppler radar, and a magnetic field. The building itself had a private security force as well, so the robbers definitely had their work cut out for them. 
Their plan involved renting an office in the building itself, giving the thieves 24-hour access into the building, using camera pens to take photos of the center and the vault itself, and, which is perhaps the most astonishing thing in this heist, they were able to place a camera hidden above the vault door, which allowed them to see guards coming and going, as well as what combinations they used to open the vault. Heck, they even practiced their heist with a full-scale replica of the vault just to make sure that everything went smoothly. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. The Coin Check Heist in January 2018, hackers broke into a cryptocurrency exchange called CoinCheck Inc. and made off with nearly 500 million in digital tokens. It is one of the biggest heists in history, with the exchange losing more than 500 million of the somewhat obscure NEM coins. The hack has raised questions about security of cryptocurrencies around the world. CoinCheck hasn't actually divulged how the hackers actually did manage to do it, but they did admit that a security lapse allowed the cyber thieves to pull off the heist. Here's what's weird about all of this, though. Since any and all cryptocurrency transactions are public, authorities know exactly where the NEM coins are. CoinCheck has indeed identified and published 11 addresses where all 523 million of the stolen coins ended up, and yet no one knows to this day who owns the accounts. Which one of these eyes impressed you the most? Let us know down in the comments. Also, make sure to check out the channel's other amazing videos. With all that said and done, that's our video for today, folks, and I will see you all next time. Later, everybody.